Okay, moving on with our trig stuff, the unit circle. Um, and I'm not kidding. I, I think that the unit circle is the most fun thing that we do all year. I love the unit circle. It's just so fun and circular and round, and everybody loves circles, right? So we're going to do the unit circle, which hopefully at some point in your life you have been exposed to it. Um, this is our old friend, the unit circle. It is actually called the unit circle because the radius is one unit. Radius is one unit. Which means if you were to draw the unit circle to scale, if you were going to draw it on the xy axis, you would only go out to one in all four directions. And it would just be this one little bitty circle from negative one to positive one on the x axis. Uh, so that is why it's called the unit circle. Um, you do need to know all of these things that are on this unit circle. You have all of the degree measures in blue. You have all of the radian angle measures in red right here. And then all of the coordinates on the unit circle throughout um, at all of these different angles. Uh, you will have quizzes on this, and I'm going to expect you to be able to, to spit all of this out. This is on page, and by golly, I just lost it. Um, this is on page, there it is, it's page 248 on your book. Uh, so I just did a screenshot of the unit circle. So if you want to actually take your textbook home for once and study, you could use this. Um, and we'll talk about ways that you can maybe memorize these things. But basically all I'm going to talk about in this lesson is how to use the unit circle, not necessarily how to memorize it. So uh, if you have problems memorizing it, then you can come see me and I may, sh I may have some little tricks that, that you could use to learn what all these angles are. Um, how to use the unit circle, once you learn everything, uh, I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions like what is the cosine of 60 or what is the tangent of pi over 6. And to answer those questions, um, like let's look at number one here. It says what is the cosine of 60 degrees? And what we could do, if it helps you to answer that question, we could draw a triangle going out to 60 degrees and we would start from the origin. Our triangles start from the origin, go up to 60 degrees, and then come straight back down to the x-axis. And what I've done there is I have created a right triangle. I have created a right triangle. There's my right angle. And this angle right here is 60 degrees. I've gone up 60 degrees. Well, if you remember, cosine is adjacent over the hypotenuse. Here's my hypotenuse. Um, but since this is the unit circle, we know that the radius is 1. Therefore, my hypotenuse is always going to be 1 for any triangle that I draw on the unit circle. So uh, I will draw my triangle this way. And if I know the coordinates of this point are 1 half and root 3 over 2, that means that in order to draw this triangle, I had to go to the right 1 half. And in this green segment, I went up to a y-coordinate of root 3 over 2. So this side length right here is square root of 3 over 2, and that's the length of this green segment. So if I want to find the cosine of that angle, I could think of it as a, circle, uh, as a triangle and do adjacent over hypotenuse, which for number 1, adjacent is 1 half, and the hypotenuse is 1, and the cosine of 60 degrees would just be 1 half. Um, now, it turns out that at all of these angles, pi over 6, pi over 4, uh, pi over 3, all of these angles throughout the unit circle, your cosine is going to be the x-coordinate. The cosine is the x-coordinate. Your sine is the y-coordinate. So if I said, what is the sine of 60 degrees, you would look at the y-coordinate. Um, that's going to be true all the way through. So if I ask you to do, say, the tangent of pi over 6, well, if I want tangent of pi over 6, in my mind, I remember that tangent is sine over cosine. So I would look at pi over 6. Okay, here's my angle right here for pi over 6. And tangent is sine over cosine. In the unit circle, sine is y. Your cosine is x. So the tangent of pi over 6 would be my y-coordinate, 1 half, divided by my x-coordinate, root 3 over 2. And that's going to give us our tangent. Tangent is sine over cosine. In this case, it's y over x. 
And then if you divide fractions, you flip and multiply by the reciprocal. So we have 1 half times 2 over root 3, the 2's cancel. And we end up for number 2 up there, an answer of 1 over the square root of 3. And I have absolutely no problem whatsoever with radicals in the denominator. I am not going to force you to rationalize your denominators. It's silly. It's one of those stupid rules of math that was put in the textbook many years ago, and it's just stuck. There are a few weird reasons why you may do it, but it doesn't convince me we need to. So we'll just leave it as 1 over square root of 3. Um, so cosine, that was your x. Tangent is sine over cosine, which was y over x. Secant, okay, well now I'm going to do secant. If you remember secant, it is the reciprocal of cosine. So if I'm going to do secant, I've got to think, oh, that's the reciprocal of cosine. So I know the cosine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. And the secant is the reciprocal of that. So I'm just going to flip that. My answer is going to be 2 over the square root of 2. Which, if you want to leave it like that, you can. But the thing with 2 over root 2, it actually does clean up. So after I just talked about not rationalizing, here I'm going to rationalize this because it turns into something sexy. It turns into 2 root 2 over square root of 2 times square root of 2 is just 2. And the 2's cancel. So the secant of power of of 45 degrees ends up being only the square root of 2. And so that is using the unit circle. You find the angle that's being referenced, cosine is your x-coordinate, sine is your y-coordinate, and then if you need something like tangent or secant, then you answer that in terms of sine and cosine by thinking about your reciprocal and quotient identities. Uh, so let's do a few more problems. I have uh, four problems right here. Uh, the sine of 2 pi over 3. So if I'm going to do sine of 2 pi over 3, I've got to actually go back and look at my unit circle. Let's find 2 pi over 3. Let's see, it's right. Here's 2 pi over 3. Sine is the y-coordinate. So I have my negative 1 half root 3 over 2. Sine is the y-coordinate. So sine of 2 pi over 3 is going to be square root of 3 over 2. So the answer to this one is simply square root of 3 over 2. These are incredibly easy questions if you can remember your unit circle. Um, and then we have the cosine of negative 120 degrees. The cosine of negative 120 degrees. Well, we talked about negative angles, right? We said negative angles and positive angles. Well, negative angles open backwards. Positive angles open this way. And if you look at our unit circle, as we look at the angles, as they increase, we go counterclockwise. So positive 120 is opening this way to 2 pi over 3, or 120 degrees. So that's positive 120. Negative 120 is opening the same distance, but going backwards. So negative 120 actually ends up being down here at 240 degrees. Now some of y'all can just see that on the unit circle. You're good visualizing, visualization people. The way I think about this, if my, if my angle is not on a nice, sexy unit circle spot, I will simply add the whole circle or subtract. But in this case, it's a negative angle. So I'm going to add the whole circle until I get a familiar angle. So negative 120 plus 360 is 240 degrees. And that's going back to the coterminal angles that we talked about yesterday. So we find the coterminal angle that is on the unit circle. So I find 240 degrees. And we needed the cosine, so here's 240. Cosine of 240 is negative 1 half. And so our answer is simply negative 1 half. Um, cosecant of 23 pi over 6. Um, now, 23 pi over 6 is pretty big. My unit circle, now we're in radians. My unit circle, the largest my unit circle gets is 2 pi. Well, 23 is a whole lot more. 23 over 6 is a lot more than 2. So when I have a big angle, I'm going to do the same thing I did with this one, except this angle is too big. So 23 pi over 6, it's not on my unit circle anywhere. I'm going to actually subtract 2 pi. So 23 pi over 6, I'm going to subtract the whole circle. Just like right here, I added the whole circle, only now I have to subtract it in terms of pi in my radian angle. Uh, we get a common denominator, so 2 pi over 1 is the same thing as 12 pi. Where did that come from? whatever, 12 pi over 6. See, 23 minus 12 is 11 pi over 6. So this is the same thing as finding the cosecant of 11 pi over 6. 
11 pi over 6. And so I would find 11 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6 is right here at 330 degrees. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So I'll look at my y coordinate. Sine is negative 1 half. And if sine is negative 1 over 2, cosecant is negative 2 over 1, or just negative 2. You do the reciprocal of your sine. Let's get rid of that. You good? You good? You good? Um, and so, uh, a little note, if your angle is outside your typical unit circle, if it's too big, if it's a huge angle, or if it's a negative angle, then you add or subtract the whole circle until you get a familiar angle. Um, so here I've gone a little bit crazy. I have tangent of 980 degrees, way too big. So I'm going to subtract 360. And so that gives me the tangent of, that'd be 620, which is still above the unit circle. So I'm going to keep subtracting my whole circle. 620 minus 360, that's going to be the tangent of 240 degrees. And the tangent of 240 degrees, now you have to remember tangent is sine x over sine over cosine, right? So tangent is sine over cosine. So I'm going to find 240 degrees. Let's go to 240. Hey, that's where we just were. And tangent is the sine over the cosine. So that would be negative root 3 over 2 over negative 1 half. So tangent is going to be negative root 3 over 2 over negative 1 half. My negatives cancel. And then I will flip and multiply. So root 3 over 2 times, instead of divide by 1 half, we'll multiply by 2 over 1. The 2's cancel, leaving me with only square root of 3 over 1. So there's our answer for tangent of 980 degrees. Good? Good, 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 good. Um, all right, let's see some other different types of questions, just very broad. Name the quadrants where your sine is positive. Um, and I, ooh, I really wish I'd said data on these. Actually, I'm going to change that real quick. There we go. Um, nothing really wrong with the x's, but um, I didn't want you to get the x coordinates on the unit circle confused with the angles that I chose. So um, name the quadrant where sine of an angle is going to be positive. Uh, well, if you remember the unit circle, I told you that your sines on your unit circle, the y-coordinates, are your sine values. So if I want my sines to be positive, I've got to think in terms of y. So when I see number 8, I'm thinking my y-coordinates need to be positive, and my y-coordinates are positive anytime I'm above the x-axis. So that will be my first and my second quadrants. So this will be quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, what about tangent? Tangent is less than zero. Now, tangent is not going to be as easy as just thinking about sine, um, because tangent is a combination of sine and cosine. So I need my y-coordinate divided by my x-coordinate to be less than zero. And if you want a negative answer when you divide two things, that means one has to be positive and one has to be negative. So for this one, X and Y have different signs. This I G N S. So um, if Y over X is negative, uh, that means they have to have different signs. So that will be in my second quadrant. If I divide my coordinates here, I'll get a negative answer. And in my fourth quadrant, if I divide these, I get a negative answer. So this answer here for number nine, that's going to be quadrants two and quadrants four. That was a terrible ampersand. A secant is greater than zero. Now, secant is the reciprocal of cosine, right? So I've got to think that's 1 over x needs to be positive, which basically just means I need my cosines to be positive. Secant's the reciprocal of cosine. So if cosine is positive, secant is positive, and cosine is my x-coordinate. So I need to be anywhere my x-coordinate's positive, and that happens on the right side of my circle, which is quadrants 1 and 4. You're good? You're good? You're good? How am I doing on time? Um, yeah, that's about what I expected. Okay, cosine is less than zero and tangent's greater than zero. Okay, so now we have a combination of things. Cosines are negative. That means my x coordinates are negative. That happens on the left side, so that's going to be quadrants two and three. When cosine is less than zero, that's where my x coordinates are negative. And if tangent, whoops, where am I? If tangent is greater than zero, 
that means x and y must have the same sign. They must either both be positive or both negative. So if tangent's positive, that means x and y are both positive or x and y are both negative. If I divide these, I get a positive. And so that would give me quadrants 1 and 3. So 1 and 3. And I want to find the place where both of those are true, and that happens in quadrant 3. Cosine is negative in quadrant 3, and tangent's positive in quadrant 3. So your answer to number 11 is going to be your third quadrant. You're good? If you're good, questions, comments, concerns, thoughts on life, thoughts on life, thoughts on life. We'll do, I think, two more. We'll see how much time that takes. Yeah, this is taking a little bit of time. Kind of what I expected. All right, find all six trig functions of theta given the following. Now, I'm telling you sine is four-fifths, and we've done a problem like this before. If I tell you sine, you have to remember that that is opposite over hypotenuse. Only now I'm telling you where to draw your triangle. So for this problem, if my angle theta is in the first quadrant, then I'm going to draw my triangle from the origin. You always start from the origin and go out into that quadrant. And then I'll finish drawing my triangle down this way. And so I have some angle theta in the first quadrant. And I know that sine opposite over hypotenuse, opposite, and hypotenuse is 4 fifths. And we need to do the Pythagorean theorem to get my third side. So a squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared, and you get a to be 3. So I'm going to take that answer and plug it in right here. And then we need to find all six trig functions. Right, so to get all six trig functions, once you draw your triangle, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that would be 3 fifths. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, which will be 4 thirds. And then once I get sine, cosine, and tangent, I can just flip them to get the rest. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, so that would be 3 fourths. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so that would be 5 thirds. And cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so that would be 5 fourths. Um, so it's a lot like the problems we did in class a couple of days ago, where you start with one, draw the triangle, and then you could find all the other ones. Uh, let's do one more of these. Let's do... Let's do this one. I know cosine is going to be negative 5 twelfths. That's your adjacent over the hypotenuse. Cosine, so katoa. And this time my angle's in the third quadrant. So I'm going to draw my angle going into the third quadrant. So I'm going to leave room going into the third quadrant. Draw my angle going out here into the third quadrant. And you always go back to your x-axis. Always go back to your x-axis. Um, now, cosine is adjacent, so this will be 5 over hypotenuse, which is 12. But it needs to be negative. If you think about where we are going, we're starting at the origin, and we end up in the third quadrant. We're going left, and we're going down. This is going to be actually a distance of negative 5, because we're going left. We're actually going left here. So that's how we get negative 5 twelfths. And your hypotenuse is always going to be positive. Um, so maybe make a little note. The hypotenuse is always positive. So for this problem, I have to find my third side. Uh, so I have negative 5 squared plus this side length squared equals 12 squared. And I'm going to assume you know how to do the Pythagorean theorem. You end up getting B to B. Ah, geez, I meant to make that 13. I'm going to make, just to make this problem easier, a little brain fart, I'm going to, I'm supposed to be white. I'm going to call this 13 instead of 12. That was a mistake. So I'm going to change that to 13. Um, and the reason I did that is because you now get a sexy answer for B, and you get 12 with your Pythagorean theorem. And um, since I am going down, I went left, and I go down, B is actually going to be negative 12 because I'm going down. So this is going to be negative 12. And now that I have my triangle drawn, this is my angle. I'm going into the third quadrant. Now I can find all of my other trig functions, sine theta and the rest. Okay, so here, here they all are. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. That would be negative 12 over 13. Cosine was given to you, negative 5 over 13. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so that would be negative 12 over negative 5. Or you could cancel those negatives, 12 fifths. 
And once you get sine, cosine, and tangent, you just start flipping. Cotangent's the reciprocal of tangent, so that'd be 5 over 12. Secant's the reciprocal of cosine, 13 over negative 5. And cosecant and sine are reciprocal, so 13 over negative 12. Woo! There we go. That got a little bit uh, long-winded. Sorry about that. Hey, but at least it's almost Friday, right?